Good morning, everyone. Here we are once again on FB Live with Columbia Asia on Doctors Go Live. Today, we're going to be talking about going to the hospital or rather not going to the hospital during a pandemic. It seems there has been a reduction in the number of people who go to the hospital these days. Does this mean everyone is nervous about going near hospitals due to COVID-19 or are they all just in health generally? Let's look into the phenomenon and speak to the consultant internal medicine physician and interventional cardiologist, Dr. Benjamin Liu from Columbia Asia, Delta Brown. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Okay, first things first, what have you observed lately from a behavioral point of view when it comes to the general public adults, given the current Well, we actually find that the number of admissions uh, for non-COVID cases have dropped in, uh, number, in, in hospitals generally. Uh, this is across the world. Uh, for example, taking heart attacks, uh, we find that in uh, places like Italy, the number of heart attacks admissions have dropped by about 70%. And uh, even in Spain, it's dropped by 40%. And even in Malaysia, uh, anecdotally, um, we can see that the number of uh, patients who are actually admitting for heart attacks have decreased by a lot. Uh, since the COVID-19 outbreak or pandemic occurred. Um, given the benefit of the doubt, let's say we look at this from a positive point of view, what could be some of the reasons why lesser people are going to the hospital these days? Well, we would like to think that maybe the behavioural changes that have taken place would have helped. Uh, one is, of course, uh, uh, people are maybe at home more, so they are taking their medication more regularly. So therefore, maybe blood pressure is better controlled. Uh, two is because maybe they have reduced stress. Um, they have reduced stress from traveling. They, they don't have to contend with traffic. Um, the, thing, the third one is, of course, reduced work stress. Uh, but that is a double-edged sword. Uh, you could have uh, a reduced stress from work or you could have no work and become more stressful. Um, or three, maybe people are less physically active because now they are, they are trapped at home. So they are less physically active, so they don't exert themselves so much. Therefore, the symptoms are not there. For maybe because they are at home, they smoke less, possibly. Um, and because of that, they are better uh, because they know that COVID affects the lung. So they may actually try to smoke less. And of course, the fifth one, pollution levels have reduced. Uh, we can see that there are stories about Malacca River being from Petare to now clear water. So we can see that pollution levels has reduced because of less cars, uh, less factories opening. So maybe this has this has brought a better change or, or a better, uh, better, better for patients as well. Uh, so these are the possible reasons why admissions may have reduced. Yes, um, but okay. Let's now imagine a scenario. Do you think there are less heart cases at the hospital now? Not because people are getting better but because they don't want to go to the hospital and prefer to remain at home with a heart illness. What do you think, doctor? Well, while I think that the reasons I gave earlier about the reduced stress and behavior changes definitely help to make people feel better, I do also note that in, in 2018, um, about 50 people die every day from heart attack. And this is a hard statistic. Um, I, I actually think that uh, most of our patients are ignoring their symptoms or making light of their symptoms because of COVID-19. And the other thing is maybe they think that, you know, although I have some symptoms, uh, I, I don't want to stress the emergency services. Let them deal with the COVID-19 and my, my problems are not as big and therefore they are not coming into hospital. Um, and also if they come in, they may come actually a bit later, maybe too late to get the maximum benefits from medication and procedures that we could do. So we should not forget that the signs and symptoms that we have, um, although it's a pandemic time for COVID, we should not forget that they warn us and we should seek help as well still. Yes. Can you describe the physical signs people should never ignore? And if they see these physical signs, they must go to the hospital immediately with regards to heart diseases. Yeah, so some of the most common symptoms of heart attack are one is a chest pain or pressure, especially in the chest. And this is on the left side of the chest. And sometimes the pain goes to the jaw or even goes to the left arm. All right. And uh, sometimes even to the stomach area where it looks like it, it feels like a gastric pain. And some people will ignore it and say, ah, oh, this is a gastric pain. Uh, 
some get sudden shortness of breath, just feel very uh, short of breath. Uh, some get cold sweats, uh, can get nausea, can get lightheadedness, and uh, of course, uh, fatigue, just get very tired, and some people feel their heart rate just goes very fast. Okay, in, in those patients with diabetes and in some females, uh, the symptoms may not be as marked or as obvious as, as usually in, in happens in males. So if you do have these symptoms, do not ignore them. It is important to seek help, even in the time of pandemic. Okay, you can go and see a doctor because if it's a heart attack, it is, it is important to treat them early and to treat them fast because appropriate and fast treatment is very important to try to help to prevent death and to improve the condition. I see. Um, what can you advise loved ones who are around the patient who has um, begun to see these kind of signs because they're at home? Is there anything, is there any immediate measures that they can take while the patient is being prepared to go to the hospital? So firstly, I think if we are at home now, we have to kind of prepare already, uh, get to know where is the hospital or the doctor that you want to bring your patient to. Uh, as we know, during the movement control order, we have a limitation on how far we can go potentially, right? So already do your homework, get to know where you want to send your patient or, or your loved one to in case there is an emergency. So find out where is your nearest hospital or your nearest clinic or get the get the number of your ambulance so that you can prepare for all this um, should, should anything untoward happen. Okay. In comparison to COVID-19, um, it seems like from what we are talking about today, the public seem to be taking other diseases slightly. What is your observation about this? With regards well, to COVID yeah. So COVID-19 is here, it's a pandemic, it's new. Um, unfortunately, we have also diseases which have always been with us for a very long time. And one of them is like dengue. Uh, between this year, the 1st of January to the 19th, to the 18th of April, already 63 people have died of dengue. And uh, we already have about 37,000 cases of dengue already uh, this year. So, of course, uh, not all cases of dengue need to be admitted, uh, but we need to also assess and see which patients are more serious and more severe dengue and they may need to be admitted. Even though there is no uh, magic bullet for dengue, there is no cure for dengue, we do need to support the body while the dengue infection clears itself. And so for some of these patients, hospitalization is very important as well. And of course, uh, adequate fluid intake. So we should not forget that there are other diseases still out there uh, on the rise uh, other than COVID-19. Um, I've also heard stories from my colleagues uh, where patients come in very late for things like appendix. Uh, usually you have uh, appendicitis and you inflamed appendix and you don't want the appendix to burst. Normally, they get a pain in the lower part of their stomach, right? Um, you don't want the appendix to burst. But now we are finding patients who stay too long at home, uh, ignore their symptoms or are too scared to come to hospital and then their appendix bursts and then they have very severe symptoms forcing them to come to hospital and the treatment is therefore more complicated than if it was just a simple appendix. I see. I see. Um, a word of advice perhaps to patients who have chronic diseases and how they can safeguard their health during an uncertain time like this. Well, for those who have chronic diseases, uh, your, just remember that your diseases are still there with you. Uh, that's number one. Uh, for those who are having non-communicable diseases like diabetes, uh, hypertension, or, or had heart failure, or eye disease like glaucoma, who had a stroke, okay, who had a heart attack maybe, uh, you should always continue your medications. Okay? Continue your medications. You may not feel unwell. You may feel very well and you may not want to go to the hospital to get uh, well, to see a doctor. And I think that sometimes is reasonable. But do contact your healthcare provider, your doctors. Uh, do contact the clinic involved. I'm sure that they can actually see you. Uh, not see you, but uh, actually can assess and see if they need to see you. Or they could just give a prescription for you to continue your medication until maybe the MCO is lifted and they can see you in the clinic. 
Maybe we can uh, reassure um, the public about how for them not to be afraid to come to the hospital, especially when they have uh, urgent symptoms, for example. So what are some of the steps that the hospital has, has taken um, in order for the public to be assured that it's okay for them to come and check with uh, the doctor if they have any concerns? Okay, so firstly, of course, hospitals will take the standard precaution. Uh, in fact, uh, hospitals, they, step, they, they clean the place, uh, they clean the hospitals more frequently than your home. That, that, that is for sure. Uh, secondly, we have temperature screening as well. Okay, um, and uh, hospitals, are, I'm not wearing a mask now, but uh, when I'm seeing patients, definitely I will wear a mask and patients are also given a mask. Uh, so actually, to come to hospital, and of course, we have the safe distancing policy where we actually separate the patients. They are not all too clustered. Um, so for, for me, better call your healthcare provider and then see uh, what is the best time. Uh, for example, uh, about uh, on Saturday, I had a patient, he's 80 plus years old. Uh, they are worried about COVID-19 and uh, they're worried to come for follow-up. He has uh, high blood pressure and uh, previous uh, heart failure. Uh, but actually, they called me and then they said, well, look, is it safe to come? And I said, look, okay, our clinic is quite okay. It's quite free. So you can come at a certain time where we can give you an appointment. And therefore, he, he came in and out in less than 30 minutes. He left he left the hospital. So that, that's very good because, uh, of course, I can allay his fears that uh, he's going to be in hospital for too long. And uh, it's true. Uh, we, can, we can get things done very quickly. We can just uh, coordinate with each other. Okay. Um, doctor, I would like to add uh, one more question. Can you explain to us what are the first eight steps that someone can um, apply whenever they see signs of a heart attack happening to someone? Okay. First things first is, I said, uh, preparation. We do need to prepare so that if it happens, we know what we're going to do. Like, who are we going to call? Are we going to call 999? Are we going to call a private ambulance? Okay, that to come. Uh, secondly, is uh, where are we going to go? Uh, you have to plan out as well. You want to go to a clinic first. You want to go to a hospital first. Okay, so these are important as well. Uh, number three is, I guess, if the patient already has uh, heart diseases uh, before, heart disease before, um, they would have something called a nitrate. Okay, sometimes it's put under the tongue. Sometimes you spray in the mouth. Okay, and this can help to alleviate the chest pain if you have it at home. Okay, if you don't have it at home, don't go and rush and come and buy one just to get it done. done. Uh, the best is actually to send the, your loved one or your, the, the patient to a clinic or to a hospital to get them evaluated. Okay, so you will also need a designated driver. Okay, we advise for the patient itself not to drive because if you're having some pain or symptoms, it's not a good idea. You drive, then you may collapse in the car and then you are uh, more danger to the public as well so these are the some of the things you can do uh, eventually is actually to bring them to a healthcare provider to assess and see whether this is a symptom of a heart attack or something else okay i see thank you very much dr benjamin Liu from colombia asia hospital tabra uh, that was a very clear explanation and hopefully that will uh, allay the fears of the public uh, in terms of going to the hospital because there are other diseases that's uh, actually present despite COVID-19 being a pandemic currently. Um, okay, if you have any questions, uh, you can always drop the questions in the comment box below and we shall come back to you and get answers for you from the doctor. Thank you very much for being with us today. Right, thank you.